Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to explain to you how deferred rendering works in DirectX 11. If you do not have a basic renderer set up, or if you just want to follow along with the tutorial, the renderer that I started with will be in the description. The first thing that I need to explain is, what is deferred rendering, and why is it better than forward rendering? Deferred rendering, also known as deferred shading, is a technique in which you do not draw to the screen directly. Instead we draw to a few different buffers called the G-buffer. G-buffer stands for graphics buffer. This buffer is then used to calculate the lights. The main advantage of deferred rendering is that you only do the lighting calculations on the pixels that should receive light. Instead of each pixel on each model, this means that you can have way more lights in your scene at once. The main disadvantages are that transparency is not possible right off the bat, and standard anti-aliasing does not work. So now that we know what deferred rendering is, how do we implement it? Well, there are a few things that we're going to need to do. The first thing is that we need to create a G-buffer and a screen quad. I won't go into detail how to create a screen quad since it's just a quad coming from negative 1 to 1 on the x and y axis. So what exactly is a G-buffer and how do we create it? The G-buffer consists of three buffers, a diffuse buffer, a position buffer, and a normal buffer. The diffuse buffer will store the textured models. This is what the scene would look like if you did not apply any lights. The position buffer contains the positions of the pixel relative to the center of the world, and the normal buffer contains the normals of the models. To create these buffers, we must create an ID3D11 Texture 2D, ID3D11 Render Target View, and an ID3D11 Shader Resource View. We need all three of these because we want to be able to render through this texture and use it in the shaders. So we're also going to need the descriptions for the creation of each of them. When it comes to the Texture 2D description, it's important that you set the width and the height to the width and the height of the window, since you don't want to lose any detail or have too much detail that we're not going to notice later. The format that I chose is DXGI format R32, G32, B32, A32, float. I chose this format because of the position buffer. This way it's unnormalized and it will work if the camera is really far away from the center of the world. The next important thing is the bind flags. The bind flags need to be D3D11 bind render target and D3D11 bind shader resource. Since we want to be able to render to the texture and we want to be able to use it in the shaders. When it comes to the render target view description and the shader resource view description, the only thing that we must do is setting the format to the format of the texture and the view dimensions to D3D11 RTV or SRV dimension texture 2D. It's important to zero the memory of the descriptions when you create them. Not zeroing the memory can cause some weird errors that can be quite difficult to find out. One way of zeroing the memory is by placing an opening and closing curly bracket behind the name of the variable. Now that we have our G-buffer, it's time to create the shaders. I'm using the effects library to make some things a little bit easier. We're going to need two different vertex and pixel shaders. One vertex and pixel shader pair will be used to create the G-buffer, and another pair will be used to render the screen quad at the end. When it comes to the pair that we create a G-buffer, we do not have to do anything special in the vertex shader. But for the pixel shader, we must use the very special structure's output. The structure needs to have three different flow trees with the semantics SVTarget0, SVTarget1, and SVTarget2. These are going to be the outputs to each section in the G-buffer. SVTarget0 is the diffuse buffer, SVTarget1 is the position buffer, and SVTarget2 is the normal buffer. For now, I'll just set the diffuse output to 111, because this is supposed to be a simple introduction so we will not handle textures, but this is the place to do it. The normal output will be the normal of the object, and the position output will be the vertex position multiplied by the model or world matrix. And that was everything that a shader pair needs to do. When it comes to the pair that would render the screen quad, the position of the vertex shader can be set to just the input position, since we want our quad to render to the entire screen. But the pixel shader is something a bit more special. In here we're going to access the normal and diffuse color that we have stored in the G-buffer. The position buffer is currently not used, but when you want to use other lights and directional light, it will be necessary. Then we can use the extracted norm on the fuse color for our lighting calculations. It's important to have an if statement that checks if the length of the normal is bigger than zero. Otherwise, we'll try to do lighting calculations on pixels where there was no model at all. The lighting code that I used here is copied from Wikipedia, since I needed something that works. Now that we have our shader set up, it's time to get all the resources from the shaders that we need. Since I'm using the effects library, I need to create an additional ID3DX11 technique for the final pass, and three ID3DX11 shader resource view variables for the G-buffer textures. Now that we've got our shaders working, it's time to bind the passes. We need two passes in total. The first pass will be the pass that we're writing to the G-buffer, and in the second pass we'll use the G-buffer for lighting calculations and to draw to the screen. When it comes to the first pass, we should bind the G-buffer's render target first. To do that, we need to create an array of the render target views, and we need a pass in this array, along with the number of buffers and the depth sense of view, into the OM set render target function. Then we can clear our buffers. The diffuse buffer can be cleared to whatever color you want, but you should always clear a position buffer and a normal buffer to black or transparent. 
After that, the only thing left to do is to select the correct tag or shader pair. After you've drawn all your objects, it's time to use the buffer. So let's create the bind function for the second pass. We first must bind our default render target, the one that's linked to the window of the application. Then we must bind all the texture from the G buffer using their shader resource views. After they are bound, it's time to select the correct tag, and then it's time to render our screen quad. We do not have to set the model view or projection matrix to identity since we're not using any of them. If you do decide to use the same vertex shader as for the first pass, make sure to do set the model identity matrix. Then all we need to do is unbind any G buffer by setting the id 3 d 11 x effect shader resource variables to null pointer. And that's all the code that we need. Now we just need to make sure that we call the bind first pass before we draw anything, and we call the bind last pass before we swap the buffers. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.